All right, what's happening, everybody? It's your boy, JD the Prophet, John Denton, and I'm back. It's episode two of The Playlist, a show where I go through the four or five things that I've been listening to this week. Can be an artist, can be a band, can be a record, anything like that. And the idea being that hopefully I can add a few things to your own playlist, and in return, in the comments, you guys can add a few things to mine. All right, let's get cracking straight away, and it's a pretty obvious one to start things off. If you've been following this channel, of course, it's Frank Ocean's Blonde record and what an album it is. I mean, yes, it's kind of an advert, right? You can go and watch the reaction probably just below this video. I think it's the previous video on this channel. But I've just got to raise a toast to the man, Frank. I mean, it really was uh, and is an outstanding piece of work. Something that it was a real pleasure to be able to listen to on camera. It's a weird thing to do. It's a weird way... To, to listen to an album for the first time, but at the same time to then go into the comments below and see how many people have enjoyed watching my reaction. It's weird. I'm not going to try and pretend that it isn't. It's weird it's to think that 12, well, 13 months ago, I guess, before we ever started this journey over on Rock Reacts, the idea of people watching me uh, listen to music and, and enjoying that is, is still strange to me, still alien to me, but at the same time, the numbers speak for themselves. And so I can only say thank you for everybody that uh, said nice things under that reaction. And I've since, as people have suggested, gone back and, and listened to it again, uh, particularly the, the first two tracks, Nike's and Ivy especially, a song that's uh, going to have a special place in my heart uh, for a long time. But also, reading a lot of the comments under the reaction, it seems clear that the second half of the album, which I did appreciate, was obviously extremely experimental. Extremely experimental is unfair because that kind of suggests that it's uh, difficult to listen to. It's not necessarily difficult to listen to, but it's a lot less accessible than the first half of the album. Apparently that is the half of the album that grows on you with repeated listen. I'm going to enjoy diving back in properly, again, not doing it on camera, not pausing it, really just letting the album soak over me. Perhaps if I've got to take a flight or, or a long train journey or something like that, that could be a good time to do it. Uh, and really starting to hopefully fall in over the second half of the album the same way that I did with the first. Not that I didn't enjoy it. And then um, definitely going to be doing his other projects as well on the channel. Obviously, it's resonated with a lot of people. So that's an obvious first point for the playlist. But perhaps if you've not heard it, uh, highly recommended from me as it is from everybody else. And perhaps you've not listened to it for a while. So hopefully you've since watching the video gone back and, and enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to checking out the rest of his stuff, of course. All right, moving on. And this was a strange one. I didn't really know what this was. Uh, suddenly Denzel Curry uh, put out a tweet and an Instagram post basically what seemed like a new project from him and I think few people got confused including me it turned out it was just a feature on an EP a very long EP from someone called Anonymous who I to be honest hadn't heard of so I checked out the track the feature with Denzel Curry is called No Threat and went on to listen to uh, the rest of the record and it's really quite good it's really really good the uh, the track with Denzel Curry Anonymous himself he does sound very similar to Denzel Curry and that's high praise you know um, he has a, a great cadence in his voice a real fire in his delivery um, and some good bars in there. I wouldn't say that I've put enough time into the record to really start breaking down exactly what he's saying. But at the same time, the track with Denzel Curry, No Threat, um, it's kind of underpinned by this haunting organ sort of church music. And it's a slightly slower pace than some of his tracks. But it has a, a, a very strong delivery there. And then it moves into the second half of the track, where I believe it's anonymous himself, moving into kind of a, a, a more singing element. Um, raps, I don't know what you call that. The, the, it's very common right now, kind of the rap singing that you might hear from a trippy red or all the, all these other types of artists, but to be fair, much more in tune than that, with a little bit of production on the vocals. But that's a very strong track, and then I, I had my, um, unfortunately, I had my Spotify on shuffle because it was left over from using Alexa, so it started hopping around the rest of the record. But everything sounded good. It actually reminded me of when I listened to a lot of uh, the kind of new metal stuff that used to come out, early 2000s, late 90s. And there'd be a lot of bands that would come out with projects that were definitely sort of within the genre and doing everything right without necessarily um, being something that's truly outstanding or groundbreaking. And everything I've heard on that is like production's on point, lyrics on point, delivery on point. One of those ones that I'm probably going to get more of an appreciation of the more I dive into it. But highly recommended, definitely. If you're a fan of Denzel Curry, and I know many people who watch this channel are, and basically everybody should be who likes either rock music or, or rap music or anything in between, because I think the guy is just fantastic. I've called him Denzel Curry is the truth before. Uh, you've got an artist here that's obviously connected with him and also sounds a lot like him in, in a very positive way. So definitely do go and check that out. I believe the mixtape is called No Threat as well. But if not, if you just type in No Threat Denzel Curry into whatever you use, Spotify, YouTube, whatever it is, you'll find that track and then you'll find the EP. It's called an EP, but it's loads of tracks on it. It's basically an album from what I can work out. But I actually saw a tweet 
from Anonymous himself um, saying, please, someone please review my album or, or my EP. We got uh, tagged in it on our Twitter. By the way, I should say this at the beginning. I'm so stupid. Please do go and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm trying to blow those up. I have the little things. We've got the new things uh, sliding up. Shout out to our man Thorin for that. Absolute legend for doing that for us. Um, but yeah, please do uh, go and follow that. And yeah, just go and there you go. Anonymous, talking about myself there, apologies. Uh, a little review of your EP. I wouldn't call it, it's not like a, a melon proper review there. I've not given it enough time, but that's kind of the nature of this. This is the idea of this is uh, some stuff to chat about and that hopefully people will then put on their playlist and then they'll come and tell me if they've either heard it or what they think or all that sort of stuff. It's kind of like a back and forth TV show. TV show? It is a TV show, right? I don't fucking know. All right, uh, moving on from there, just a quick one, a track that's been on the radio a lot, um, if you know my uh, comings and goings, or when we're driving, I just listen to Radio 1 in the UK, it keeps me abreast of what's happening in pop music, a lot of the music's on there is trash, but at the same time, they've been playing Days Black and The Morning Show, which is uh, kind of outstanding for where the country is right now, and we need tracks like that, and they've also been playing a song called Baby by Giggs. Um, I heard of gigs before. Heard some of gigs before. Obviously, if you if you're English, that name is you know synonymous with one of the greatest football players of all time. Not necessarily the greatest characters of all time, but as a Man United fan, uh, a hero of mine. But obviously, gigs the rapper, um, a guy with a very very deep cadence. I was surprised to see what he looked like when I first heard him because he has such a baritone voice. I was expecting him to be a big fat guy, to be honest, but he's not. He's just um, yeah, obviously an in shape dude, but. Uh, this track, Baby, is it's unusual. It has this crazy line about Madagascar where the monkeys make the poo scatter. It's, it's weird. And then this hook where he starts speaking, honestly, in a voice that sounds a bit more like mine, like a, a kind of, uh, they call it a recessive English accent. That's my accent. He starts speaking like that. Hello, baby. It's quite, it's quite, it's a funny track, but it has a darkness to it. I've heard he's got some other bangers out right now that I want to check out. Maybe we'll go and do them on Rock Reacts. This is the gift and the curse of what I do. Um, it's amazing being this involved in music again, but at the same time, there's so much we have to shut out to make sure that we're doing it on camera that uh, you don't end up listening to everything you want to when you remember to do it. But on the flip side, hopefully uh, you guys can tell me which gig stuff that we need to be reacting to. And if you've not heard gigs, go and check him out. He's very good. And um, I'll just do four this week, I think. I'll just do four. It's been a quiet week. There's been a few things released. I know Billie Eilish was released today, but we've not heard that yet. Uh, again, uh, probably holding off on one or two tracks for, for Rock Reacts for that one. But um, it's... Uh, but yeah, just for the fourth one, moving back into kind of the rock world for a minute. And it's the new track called Anxiety by uh, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. Frank Carter, who... Well, I guess he's been with that band for a long time now, but he was in Gallows before... And it is nice maturing of their sound. Um, it's not necessarily a heavy track at all, but it's kind of like a, a good melodic hard rock ballad with um, good subject matter, interesting, especially so much about anxiety, depression, mental health is sort of packaged up and resold these days. Uh, this is a more interesting take on that subject matter. It's not a song that's going to change the world. It's not an earth shattering, genre bending record or anything like that. It's more like a slight mellowing with age of an artist and a group of artists that have been synonymous with very very sort of loud aggressive music for a long time but they've not lost their edge unlike say bring me the horizon i'm not hearing this as a, as a band that's lost their edge they're just softening with age as we all do and uh, yeah decent track so if you're looking for something in that world definitely recommend checking that out seeing what you like if you're a hardcore hip-hop head uh, i'm not going to say that that is necessarily the track that's going to convert you to rock music isn't that kind of track but again if you've got broader tastes or you come from a rock background do check it out let me know what you think Okay, that's it. It's just four on the music playlist this week. Like I say, a bit of a quiet week, and we're gearing up for a big recording session. Actually, on Monday, as I'm recording on Rock Reacts, we're going to hear a bunch of new music then, which is going to be exciting. Um, but as I like to do in the playlist, is also going to be a game of the week and uh, a show slash movie slash podcast, whatever of the week. And the game of the week is obvious. The game of the week is obvious. Um, it has to be, absolutely has to be Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Um, if you've been following this channel, then you'll know that uh, I've been playing it, I've produced a video on it, and also, in fact, launched a new channel, Profit Plays, which you go and subscribe to now, which is going to be like edited Let's Plays of games, or whatever gaming stuff takes my mind. If you know me, I've been professional in the games industry, writing, criticising, running magazines, all that sort of stuff since 2005, which is a long time ago now. Um, and YouTube has been a difficult uh, medium to do gaming in. Um, I like reviewing games, but at the same time... 
reviewing games on YouTube when you're straight in competition with things like IGN, very, very difficult. So the edited Let's Plays is a fun way for us to hang out and for me to create content around gaming, and we'll see where that goes. But definitely go and subscribe to Profit Plays. Anyway, that's going to be its own separate video. I don't know why I'm going on, going on about it here. Um, Sekiro is so far, I'm probably about five, six hours in. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. The combat is on a completely different level to what we've seen so far in From Software Games. Uh, I know some people are having some problems with it, but that may be because they've spent hundreds of hours playing the Souls games, Bloodborne, etc. Which itself was its own take on it, but still very similar. You can still play that in that kind of measured distance, gauging the distance, counter-attacking way. Yep. You can't really do that in Sekiro, you can't really get around the back of people in the same way, and the idea is, even with the way the blocking works and stuff like that, you have to be aggressive, aggressive, and parry and stuff like that, to, and when it works, oh man, it is glorious. Already had some incredible boss battles, it is tough, it is brutal, but I guess as somebody who's finished Dark Souls and finished Bloodborne, uh, and bounced off Dark Souls 2, got a bit bored, and kind of stopped playing 3, I don't know why really, I just did. Um, I'm not so good at those games that... I don't remember how difficult they were, if that makes sense. I still have very, very strong memories of putting 10 hours and not getting anywhere on Bloodborne, uh, putting in 10 plus hours and not getting anywhere on Dark Souls. And like I said, I've eventually finished those games, so I'm kind of okay with putting in four, five, six hours and not getting that far in Sekiro, although things are moving now. But, I mean, it has to be said, even from the amount that I've played so far, that uh, Miyazaki just has to be considered one of the greatest directors, video game developers, video game minds his industry's ever seen. Um, his games perhaps lack a little bit in polish here and there, but they make up for it with invention, with design, with ambition, with true video game storytelling that couldn't be done elsewhere, uh, by you know memorable encounters, combat systems. Um, you know, There's a reason there is an enormous cult following. These games shouldn't be massive hits, by definition. They're extremely difficult, they're esoteric, they're about weird subject matter. They're, you know, until now were RPGs, kind of hardcore RPGs, and yet they have huge followings and make millions and millions of dollars because they're that fucking good. They're that good that the word of mouth has made them that big, and I'm very happy to feel that Sekiro is already in there. And some people are saying it's the best, and we'll see. So for me, Bloodborne's the best, but um, I'm excited to, to get through the rest of it, and you guys get to, to join in and watch me do it, which is cool. And then finally, show slash movie slash whatever of the week. Just to wrap things up, um, I watched The Dirt on Netflix, which is the Motley Crue movie, where the man himself, Machine Gun Kelly, plays Tommy Lee. And I was pleasantly surprised by his performance. I saw him in Bird Box. Uh, I thought he was fine in that movie, but wasn't really given anything to do. But um, yeah, I thought he was thoroughly decent as Tommy Lee in this movie. And the movie itself, it's got a bit of a kicking. In, on Metacritic and stuff like that, but to be honest, I, like, I kind of went in not expecting much. Even as a metalhead, I wouldn't say I'm a Motley Crue fan, it's never really been my era, never really been my genre, the hair metal thing, but as a kind of switch your brain off, mindless romp through uh, through Motley Crue's kind of misdemeanors and their crazy lives they were living, um, a fast movie, very enjoyable. Uh, some people said it's not extreme enough, some people said that, some people said that. I, I guess you could definitely label some criticism at it that there is no strong female characters whatsoever and they're, they're kind of props in that movie, but I guess you could also say that that was kind of the life of Motley Crue, was the women in their lives were kind of props. So I don't think that's necessarily a, a criticism that you could level at this particular movie. I don't want to say it's a classic or anything like that, but uh, thoroughly enjoyable. And, you know, it's always going to get extra points with me if it's a, it's a movie about band or music or musicians, stuff like, whether it's straight out of Compton or anything like that. And, you know, that just gets extra points with me. I, obviously, I love that world. I find it fascinating. So, uh, yeah, want to check out, even if you're not a rock fan, because like I said, I'm not a Motley Crue fan at all. So, but it's just, it's just a good movie. And it's actually interesting to see how good Machine Gun Kelly is in that role. He's very good. Um, so that's it, episode 2 of the playlist. I need to know from you guys what we need to be listening to, and I'm not just talking about react to this, react to that, that is my life, I hear that all day, every day. Uh, I'm talking about stuff that we can probably, uh, stuff that I could actually listen to that's not necessarily going to make for a, a reaction video. For example, the anonymous stuff it wouldn't have necessarily worked as a, a reaction video, perhaps with the Denzel Curry track, but it's probably not going to get the crazy views that, that some of the videos on our channel get, and sometimes it's nice just to be able to go in and listen to some music without having to worry about doing it on camera or delaying it and things like that. So that's a good example. I want people to, to let me know what we need to be listening to and we can kind of figure out what might work for a reaction, what, what might just work to, to hear. And I, I, I honestly, like all of us, 
I just love music and I love listening to music. So yeah, let me know on that and obviously games and movies and all that sort of stuff as well. But this will always be a music first show. So thank you very much for watching. My name is John Denton. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, please. Go and follow those social links right now. The amount of subscribers I have, uh, the amount of subscribers even I have on my own personal channel is still so much more than the Twitter and the Instagram, and it's crazy. And then you compare it to Rock Reacts, you don't care. Right, guys, I need to actually hammer home. Please come and follow. I'm on there all the time, chatting to people all the fucking time. Thank you very much for watching. I've been John Denton, aka JD the Prophet. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace!